Imagine clickbaiting your own fans by faking your death on YouTube just to promote the new brand deal you got. Is this how we're returning, Nikita? Because if that's the case, then you should have stayed gone. Oops. I can already see the disappointment on your face right now because we all expected at one point that Nikita Dragon would take accountability for her recent actions. But, um, I guess when it comes to her, no one should be surprised or shocked by her behavior that continues to get worse. Yep. As we all know, Nikita had one of the biggest failures on the internet last month after she decided to release her new song, D-I-C-K. And despite how she stirred up a lot of controversy by trying to expose her exes and multiple celebrities, it still wasn't as problematic as we thought it would be. Since, well, she also decided to disrespect numerous transgender celebrities on social media by writing the word on their eyes just to promote her freaking song. <laughs> I would say it was a double homicide, but my girl was already planning on making it a triple homicide because she also got attacked on social media for lying about having male genitals for clicks and attention. And y'all, all I can say is that it made the trans community super upset and disgusted by her. Now, I know you're wondering why the last few weeks have been so peaceful. Well, aside from Nikita taking a short break off of social media and finally leaving us the heck alone, she thought it would be suitable for her if she returned to the internet with a messy drama because, you know, her ego is too big to apologize for her mistakes. But anyways, she decided to make a shocking return on her Instagram account after she promoted her new YouTube video titled R.I.P. Nikita Dragon. And guys, that's when things went downhill for her. I mean, at first thought, people had a feeling that something terrible must have happened to Nikita based on the title and the thumbnail of her new YouTube video. But... Um, it turned out to be quite the opposite, actually. As smart as Nikita thinks she is, she was clickbaiting her own fans by faking her death in the video's title just to promote her new brand deal. Excuse me? Bedazzle, so much for sponsoring this video. And if you guys want to buy any of my styles, I will link them all below. Of course, you can use the link in my bio. You know, as disgusting as her video is, I don't think it got more disgusting when she continued tricking the videos in the description of her video as well because she had this to write about her fake death. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to lay to rest a woman with my names. Transsexual, pop star, CEO, bad B, but to most known as simply Nikita Dragon. May she rest in peace. RIP 2019 to 2021. Shop here at ShoeDazzle.com. This video is in partnership with ShoeDazzle. It was clear that she was trying to seek attention by clickbaiting the viewers with her title and thumbnail. And guess what she did? She successfully grabbed everyone's attention in a really negative way since her video received over 5,000 dislikes in 24 hours only. It should have had more dislikes if I'm honest, but I understand that Nikita opened up about her struggles in her video just to gain some sympathy while promoting her brand deal. And she somewhat convinced thousands of her viewers out there with that. Pretty smart if you ask me, but definitely disturbing to make this your comeback since Nikita immediately started trending on Twitter with thousands of people attacking her for faking her death for views and attention. Here's what they had to say. Why the f*** would she do that? I do see what you all say joking about death is disgusting. Clout chasing at its finest and y'all are falling for her shenanigans once again. WTF do you expect from her? This is literally the same woman who supports capitalism, does black fishing, all these influencers will disappoint you in the end anyways. Influencers are the new celebrities. She literally just proved herself wrong with that video. Surprisingly, Nikita Dragon wasn't the only influencer who got in some drama this week because even Cabby Lame disappointed millions of people yesterday after he 
used racism as an excuse for body shaming people in the past. I don't know what you mean, Mayor Bates. I simply don't understand how these influencers continue making problematic statements after they get called out for their past actions. Is apologizing and owning up to your mistakes really that hard? It's low-key difficult nowadays to tell whether an apology is genuine or not because some of these influencers are out here apologizing while committing the same mistakes over and over again. <coughs> Nikita. <coughs> <clears throat> but I feel like we should focus on the progress these influencers make in the future and whether they're still involving themselves in controversies or not. Now, when it comes to Cabby Lame, I can assure you that it's a totally different story from other influencers, including Nikita herself. Because as some of y'all know, Cabby got involved in some pretty messy drama a couple of months ago after he got accused of body shaming women in his past TikTok videos like this. Exposing that kid in one dot lane if you still support him after this bit of disrespectful and disguise that what he's saying all women care about are one man cleaning out, etc. <laughs> Body shaming these beautiful girls and his caption saying you can't have it all. <laughs> On top of this, you guys, Cabby also got accused of making fun of people who hurt themselves, which caused him to lose millions of followers on TikTok in a matter of days. TikTokers are canceling Cabby Lane for his past videos of body shaming and some other questionable stuff that he's done. Basically, people are finding out about some old videos that Cabby has on his account. In a lot of them, he seems to be judging girls for like not having a big enough butt. And in this one, he seems to be making fun of people who have scars on like their wrist, um, if you know what that means. A lot of people think that Cabby should have his account taken down for this. If you don't know, Cabby Lane just hit 100 million followers like a day or two, which is a little weird because there was this huge campaign to cancel Charlie D'Amelio right as she hit 100 million followers as well. All these resurfaced videos made Cabby get called out on social media, and for the most part, you guys, I feel like Charlie D'Amelio's fan base were the only ones who were taking it too far by making accounts called Cabby is Lame just to attack Cabby and make him lose followers, since they were terrified that he would surpass Charlie in followers at one point and become the most followed TikToker ever on the platform. Yeah, this is just too much. Now, despite Cabby taking zero accountability for his past actions, some people believe that all these resurfaced videos were actually edited by Charlie's fan base just to set him up and make him get canceled. Others strongly believe that Cabby did in fact body shame women in the past and made fun of mental illness. And y'all, this situation made Cabby come to the conclusion that the reason why he's being attacked is that he's black instead of his scandals. He proceeded to post this on his Instagram stories. Say no to racism. And y'all, he even wrote a statement this week blaming people for being racist towards him after he lost a bunch of followers because of his resurfaced videos. Just take a look at this. I'm seeing a lot of comments where people say, I unfollowed you because you did this video. I don't mind guys, we are almost in 2022 and people still use racism because they have nothing to do in their life. Be happy, follow your dream and try to save the planet. You can also unfollow me. I don't care about the numbers, I care about your hearts. If you do think of something new, do it right and in a positive way. I wish this wasn't real. But sadly it is. So many people were extremely upset about Cabby's statement since he decided to use racism as an excuse for his past actions, such as body shaming and making jokes about mental illness for the sake of entertainment. Here's how people reacted to the whole situation. No way he's using racism as an excuse. Not him trying to turn it into racism. Not the racism card, LMAO. I would love to hear your opinions on this issue, you guys, but let's end today's video with Daniel Danielle Cohen allegedly lying about her pansexuality again. You know what? It's either people intentionally accusing Danielle of lying or my girl is straight up queer baiting in front of our eyes just to gain more followers. It's genuinely confusing to be honest, but we are not making any assumptions here about anyone's sexuality. As I already addressed on my channel before, Danielle Cohen came out a couple of months ago as pansexual in an Instagram post. And um, 
Mm, as much as people already had a feeling that Danielle could have been lying about it, they still convinced themselves that she could have discovered her pansexuality just recently. Although, this did not stop the internet from accusing Danielle of lying about her sexuality, including her ex-manager who made an entire YouTube video exposing Danielle of lying about being pansexual for attention. For the record, Danielle is not pansexual. She says she's pansexual all the time. Um, she has said the words that she would never date a girl and said multiple times that she would never date Mason or anyone else that was bi, um, which is offensive to say the least. And yeah, this was pretty messy and not gonna lie, if I'm being honest, a lot of people took sides with him in this situation because no one really believed that Danielle is in fact pansexual. Now, it's been a couple of months since this drama went down and aside from all the assumptions about Danielle's sexuality, my girl Danny decided to open up about her sexuality again this week after she felt comfortable enough to make a provocative TikTok video talking about how she can go both ways. <laughs> You know that feeling when you watch a TikTok video and you already just know what the comment section looks like? Because that's exactly what I felt when I saw Danielle's TikTok video since many people in the comment section were disregarding Danielle's sexuality by saying her pansexuality isn't real and she's only hopping on the trend. Huh? This girl is just all over the place at this point. She claims she's pan yet all her friends and producers said it was for clout so like I don't believe her. Only because it's a trend. Anyways loves, what What's your opinion on people accusing Danielle Cohn of lying about her sexuality? Make sure to leave all your juicy opinions on today's recap video down in the comments below. I love you so much!